everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL course, Role of Craft and Technology in Interior Architecture. So today we will discuss module 19 and we will see varied case studies from Uttarakhand. So it is basically a visual repository. So there are a lot of visuals and slides will I, which I will be just running through and then we will talk and discuss about uh, different interior architecture styles and building crafts of Uttarakhand. So just to give an overview, what are the contents for today's module? Visual repository, space making crafts or building crafts and interior architecture. And we will understand them through case studies from Uttarakhand and we have a list of references towards the end. So there are different kinds of interior architecture styles, whether we talk about residences or public buildings or different kinds of uh, construction uh, methods that we see in Uttarakhand. So I have just tried to put together different case studies, uh, whatever like I have documented on my own and experienced on site. So we will just uh, see through it and to understand the finer details, we will uh, rely heavily on the uh, module which talks about decoding systems within interior architecture. But for now, it is just a visual repository and we will just try to see things and absorb them. So this is one Sarai, the Travellers Inn that we see in Haridwar, it is called Bika Nir Sarai and it is a very old uh, Sarai. And here we see the facade and we see the work, you know, here the carvings and the stone uh, work that is done over here. So when we go to Haridwar, you know, there are just near the ghats, there are narrow lanes and while walking we will just see the dharamshalas and we will just, uh, you know, try to navigate through the spaces and all that comes out or highlighted or gets highlighted over here is just the facade which has the major details. So this stands out and uh, it has some level of intricacy and the work which is done by hands. The same sarai and these are the jharokas or the balconies and we see in the you know interiors. So th this is again a central courtyard and a distinct character to spaces and we see these you know arcades over here and some carvings and relief work which is happening here. So again, this is like, you know, the central courtyard which binds the entire space. We also see the detailing in the hardware. So here we see the door knobs and here we see the railings. So the metal work that we see over here is very interesting. And uh, Rurki and Haridwar, they actually have uh, this uh, traditional uh, technique, you know, they, there is a lot of work that we see in wrought iron and cast iron. So that is seen over here. Uh, these are different frames which show different spaces within the same sarai. So different space making elements and different, you know, furniture elements. Here we see the door, here we see the staircase and uh, yeah, furniture is not there. The central courtyard, the hardware over here. So it's just a repository. Then these are some pictures from Chamoli and it has very intricate wood carvings and we see over here the structural integration, we see the brackets with lot of you know carving, here we see the carving getting done on site and uh, the artisan or the craft person is working on it. This is one Gurdwara in Dehradun, you know the place of worship of the Sikh, it is called Dehra Ram Rai Darbar. And it's a very old Gurdwara, very famous, lot of people come here from, you know, far off places. And it is known for its frescoes. So here we see, you know, several motifs, we see the different colours which are natural pigments. And uh, if you go today, like these are recent pictures, few years ago. So a lot of them have actually, uh, you know, they have come out of the wall and the condition is dilapidated. And uh, some steps have been taken forward for its conservation and restoration. Uh, and few of the panels can still be seen in very original forms and original colors. And there are different motifs over here and different designs that we come across. Again, some pictures. And here also we see a lot of narratives and you know, there are a lot of stories of different gurus and rulers and the uh, you know, the people who belong to the time when it was getting constructed or otherwise from the religion. So those kinds of stories are here. 
which flank the you know uh, arches the spaces between them under them walls ceilings here we see some details and these are all space making elements and we see the you know details of the minaret and the dome and we see some work over here again some you know frescoes and here it's a very beautiful uh, site here if we see there is so much detailing it's very very intricate very detailed out and still preserved in its you know original form so all the frescoes that we see over here and they have varied motives these are another pictures here we see this entrance door and then this wall completely you know decorated with all these natural pigments and frescoes and different uh, stories that go with them again another picture which shows the details we also see uh, the you know stone work here this is marble and these are new additions not the original uh, gurudwara so the stone work over here these are added later so we see different kinds of materials and different kinds of um, craft forms we see this uh, timber and metal craft different kinds of you know doors we see and this is also a very old door so we have this metal and timber and the there is paint on that so it's hiding it but the original details are quite aesthetic then again you know the flooring the marble flooring and the inlay that is happening so all these you know interior spaces and interior elements like doors and then floor and we have these details of twin columns with frescoes and motifs and paintings on them so these create another experience when uh, one goes inside other than the spiritual context where it is situated these are some pictures from dhar chula which is in uttarakhand and uh, it is known for its uh, community indigenous construction which is uh, earthquake resistant and climate responsive and we see some you know the windows over here we see the door frame and door jam and we see some detailing of the you know timber and carving and the different kinds of motifs that are being made so we see this uh, these pictures here this is another one so ornamentation over door and windows it's like very detailed if we can see over here here if we see the details again like usually there is a ganesha motif over here like we saw in one of the previous modules and all the carvings and details and also the colors that have been put over here so these are all intrinsic to the interior architecture style and done by the community these are the pictures of the jageshwar temple which is a very famous temple in almora uttarakhand and it's entirely done in stone and it's basically dry masonry and uh, it has very intricate uh, carvings which bring out the details of you know the gods and goddesses and the na the nature the motifs from nature all that we see over here here we see a drawing and it tells us about different you know space making elements so we see this kalasha and then we see the amlaka over here there is canopy shikhara then there is uru shikhara we see the mandapa and we see the ard mandapa so you know the different uh, elements of temple architecture of india so that's how it has been made but what is unique from outside are the different kinds of carvings and the construction details that have been done in stone another few details and the pictures that we see over here section see the limited tensile strength of stone is critical in determining the space sizes so because the stone was used it was all dry and block masonry and then we know that limited tensile strength is there in stone so keeping all this in mind and working uh, just with the gravitational forces and how this entire temple which is so huge humongous and it has a lot of height you know if we see over here in the section that's how it has been uh, constructed and created by the wisdom of the community and the people and the sthapatis who used to make temples so this is again stone craft and interior architecture 
Kedarnath temple, very famous temple and we all know that in 2012 this serious calamity happened and all the buildings and structures which were surrounding the temple they were just devastated but this temple stood and that is what is to learn from you know past and how these strong buildings were made, uh, what were the principles of construction, how did they take care of the uh, natural calamities and earthquake and wind forces and other than that also there is this uh, you know the spirit of seva and how the community comes together when it is constructing a temple and their age old wisdom and knowledge about this material stone and how the details like this the relief and the carving also where they are situated and if somebody stands over here can they watch it so what is the level of detail what is the depth what is the cone of vision all that is kept in mind and of course structurally it's a very sound building and it has its own structural dynamics and the, also the energy center why it is placed on this site. So there is so much to learn from the existing interior architecture styles and traditional knowledge systems. So through all these case studies we will at least just try to have a glimpse of these different interior architecture art craft styles and just try to absorb them and whosoever is interested in a particular case study they can go into the details later few of them we will try to understand when we see how to decode the uh, systems within interior architecture styles this is another temple which is lakha mandal and we see lot of detail over here which is metal and door and again it's you know local stone and done by the community together and it has this timber canopy Mahasu Devta temple another very famous and beautiful temple in Uttarakhand and we see different space making elements we see this conical canopy over here we see the finial the colorish pinnacle over here and these are all the slate roofs and Uttarakhand has lot of interior architecture styles which have these slate roofs and locally they are called pathal so this is how it is done there is this wooden structure over here that we see then here we see these dangling friezes these friezes of this part over here then we see this door which is also very detailed out and we see this stone the local stone out of which the construction is done which takes care of the structural uh, details as well the door that I was mentioning these are some pictures over here some details some motives and of course the original uh, motives and paintings are not there in very good condition everywhere so at some places they have been restored and preserved this is an interior space of a village in Mana which is like we are discussing Uttarakhand so it is a village in Uttarakhand it is apparently called as the last Indian village and these are the interiors and we discussed in one of the modules you know the local car soil and the timber and how the community they create their own living spaces and they do this leap and work on floor every few months and they also do this you know car soil plastering after every few months so this is all done indigenously by the community with the local uh, material natural resources this is an old Haveli in Rudki itself and this here we see lot of details uh, in timber, we see details in metal and stone. So it is still there in good condition and uh, it also reflects on the economic status of the person who lives there and uh, there are several stories that we get to know of the past when we visit here and talk to the owners and which they very happily agreed to discuss and you know get interviewed also so this is a very exquisite you know entrance we see over here so we see this door and this typical feature we also find in Shikhabati Havelis in Rajasthan the place plays this veranda to sit and it's there in Gujarat also they are known by different names so these are very typical characteristics of Havelis and this ornamentation that we see here in stone and then here we see in timber and also there is some metal work. They are all detailed out by hands and they are done by the 
local artisans and craft persons. Some other pictures that we see over here, the details, details of the ornamentation and we see the structural details, the brackets over here, which is again a stone. Then we see all the details here on this platform. We see the timber on the frame and the jam and here inside the panel of the door also. All those details we get to see. Also, we see some details on the threshold here and here. So, all of these were practiced by community and they are very age old practices which have been, you know, transferred from one generation to another. And we still see Havelis like this in very good condition in present Roorkee itself, you know, in the present day. Some zoom in details, what are the motifs and it, like in most of the, you know, old buildings, Havelis and residences, we see there is so much uh, to talk about nature and surroundings and uh, what these, you know, floral motifs uh, embed within them as uh, meaning. So, there is everywhere this common practice of uh, embracing nature, celebrating harmony with nature and uh, also these floral motifs represent godliness, you know. So, God has created everything, it's God's creation. So, celebrating all that has been given to us, bestowed upon us. We see all these different kinds of details that have been done in stone. Again, here we see the structurally integrated stone craft. We see over here this elephant and this works as a bracket over here. Here they, it works as a bracket. We see some stone work here which has been broken now. We see these brackets. So, all these are like space making elements, columns, brackets and we see some work happening on the uh, surface. So, some is surface integrated, some is structural integrated, all those details we see. Also, there is very interesting furniture belonging to the times when this uh, Haveli was made. We see these different kinds of stools. We see these kinds of door panels and window panels, so timber and glass. This is again the zoom in picture of the entrance door and it is like in most of the cultures and in our customs we see that the entrance door is very elaborate and it's quite uh, intricately done because it's the entrance and it welcomes people and also talks about the economic status of a family. So, this is done intricate in very intricately. We see some interesting pieces of furniture over here, we see this table, the dressing table. So, all those details were seen inside this Haveli. This is another Sarai or the Travellers Inn which is situated in Kankhal. Again, it is near Haridwar. And here also we see, you know, these distinct characteristics of old Havelis. We see these Jharokas and we see these, you know, beautiful frescoes. And the, all the work over here is done in bricks and then there is this lime plaster on it. So, this is quite old and lot of it is uh, still in good condition, but few parts they need some uh, restoration and some finishing work. So, this is a very interesting uh, Sarai. So, it was a Haveli which is now converted into a traveler's inn or a Sarai and um, facade instantly catches our attention like I was telling in one of the previous slides also. So, Near Haridwar, there are so many tourists who come because there is Ganges and everybody visits the ghats. So, you know, just navigating through narrow streets and coming across such beautiful facades. And when we go inside the spaces, you know, they are the interior spaces are still of the old Havelis and they have their peculiar characteristics. Also, this door, which is, you know, humongous, it is on a very huge scale and it has some timber and metal details. So, all these details are very interesting to look at. Now, what is more crucial is like in one of the modules we were discussing about the creative and cultural industries. It is also crucial to find out the people, the artisans and the communities who have worked on it and whether these are continued today in what form and why are they not practicing it today. And if we can link interior architecture practices uh, and building crafts with the creative and cultural uh, industry part and try to, you know, uh, also dig out deep the employment and the livelihood of the artisan community or the craft persons who have been working on that. As architects and designers, it could be a huge contribution 
whichever projects we do or wherever we go to study and document rather than just documenting the material techniques tools if we could also understand you know which is the community or the cluster that practices that still practices all these uh, techniques and art and craft forms and these interior architecture styles it would be a huge repository in itself many people are doing uh, in their own ways and we all can also contribute again it has frescoes if we see this sarai at nankal so all these details they are still there it's a very old haveli which is converted to sarai and we see all these details of you know the brick and the plaster we see here this metal and timber door the early doors which were made in you know checkered grids with this metals floral motifs we have frescoes over here so all these uh, pictures they you know and the documentation which was done it gives it creates a visual repository for us these are some pictures of sulani aqueduct roorkee it is actually the first aqueduct in asia and it was constructed during the uh, britishers reign and today there is this old aqueduct which is structurally very very sound it has when the condition assessment was done here at iit roorkee uh, the structure is still intact there are very few minor leakages and um, there is one aqueduct which is opposite that so if one is here the one is over here across the this stream across the road another aqueduct which is new and which is made uh, by the funding from the world bank but this one has its own peculiar character it's very um, aesthetic also and uh, still it's in good condition and we see different elements different space making elements over here we see these columns we see this you know bridge the arch the structure of the aqueduct and we see lot of metal work over here in the joinery here the metal railing these are the kind of joinery details that are there so all these space making elements and their details and the kind of uh, work that was done originally in this aqueduct which is like very old this gives us lot of information about the kinds of industries and the building crafts that could be practiced at that time we see other elements over here so there is this staircase spiral staircase that goes all the way like that so these are different pictures of this aqueduct then we have different hill settlements of uttarakhand which uttarakhand is known for and there is a different uh, system of construction and cattle is always kept on the ground there are climatic reasons for that so when we see the decoding system part we'll learn more about it and you know there is this local way of making there is a mud layer there is a there are timber planks there are local stones which are called patthal and that's how we make these kinds of uh, roof forms with ridge beams and then they take care of heavy rain and the slope is provided so all different kinds of settlements different kinds of interior architecture styles and all these are done by the local people the owner of the house along with his family the community they have this knowledge how these roof forms can be constructed how can how will they take care of the rain and the slope should be like that the water drains out and the local stone available they know about everything and of course now these construction practices are getting replaced because there is newer material and new uh, technology available but still we see lot of interior architecture forms and the case studies in uttarakhand which you know tell us and make us learn about these age old practices this is from the interiors and the details koti banal style of architecture we saw in previous modules we saw a lot of drawings we saw the joinery details so any visual repository of uttarakhand is incomplete if we don't put the koti banal style of architecture so we already have a hang of things now that it has alternative bands of timber and stone and it's, it's earthquake resistant and uh, what are the different spaces inside it this is one slide this is a uh, village malari and one residence there and we see the koti banal style the alternate timber and stone bands and we see this section over here which shows the spaces this again the interior and the local khar soil and the timber uh, roof over here 
and we see some corner details and this handmade scooped out uh, staircase. So all these details we see over here. So we saw several kinds of interior architecture styles of Uttarakhand and uh, we will keep seeing them, uh, you know, and we have already seen few in few other modules. So we are just trying to understand the different kinds of interior architecture styles, building crafts, and we are trying to understand the interrelationship throughout this course. I would like to end by this interesting quote by Winston Churchill. We shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. Architecture is made of memory. The slope of a roof, the shape of a window, and the color of a door contain the record of the minds that conceived them and the hands that crafted them. This is what we keep discussing all the time that the places that we live in have memory associations and the art craft forms only enrich those memories and experiences within the interior architecture that are created in which we do not just get shelter but there are several other things like these memories and experiences. Our next module will talk about the miscellaneous case studies that we saw throughout the week. So we will see uh, the you know different consolidated uh, repository of varied case studies. References, these are specific to what we discussed today. So we see here Koti Banal architecture, we see the community involvement, indigenous realities, we also read about the technical guidelines for stone construction. Charter on the built vernacular heritage, earthquake safety, all that is particular, particularly specific to the Uttarakhand construction and interior architecture. Other than that, what we have already discussed about interior architecture, art craft forms, there are several other references, paintings and other uh, techniques that have been employed by the communities and people of Uttarakhand. So here, consolidated references, they will be beneficial whenever we talk about this course and this subject, whichever module we are at, but all of them have a role to play. So craft traditions of India, craft atlas of India, the larger overview. Paradigms of Indian architecture, thank you.